in a fascinating new biography called Scalia, A Court of One by Bruce Allen Murphy, a professor at Lafayette College. Bruce, talk to us about how Scalia's Catholicism has shaped his legal philosophy. Hi, Teray. Scalia was taught his Catholicism by his immigrant Romance language professor father, his immigrant Italian, and uh, he learned a very devout pre-Vatican II traditional Catholicism that has shaped his life, uh, and he got to the point that uh, he was very much in disagreement with Kennedy and when Kennedy disavowed his connection between his job and the presidency and, the, and Catholicism. Once on the court, Scalia has been disavowing any connection to Catholicism in his judging while simultaneously has been showing in many of the social issue cases, uh, abortion, gay rights, the death penalty cases, that he hews to a much older traditional pre-Vatican II faith. So he actually has gotten into a disagreement with the Pope and with the modern Catholic Church over the death penalty issues. And he believes that uh, the, uh, the clock should be turned back, I think, to a different era. Pretty remarkable when you are more conservative than the Pope. <laughs> but Bruce, you know, he uses, Scalia uses a judicial approach that he calls originalism, mm -hmm. right? It's the opposite of the idea of the Constitution as a living document. He thinks you can go back to the text itself, divine the original intent of it, and use that for all your judicial decision making. He talked about that specifically in this case, D.C. versus Heller, which right. was a landmark case regarding how to interpret the Second Amendment. Is the Second Amendment about the rights of a militia, or does it include an individual right to self-defense and to bear arms? Scalia, supposedly using his philosophy of originalism, comes to this idea that it's really about an individual right and is very much criticized by not just more liberal uh, justices but also by conservatives. Richard Posner essentially said you're just sort of cherry-picking historical data and making stuff up. He said the range of historical references in the majority opinion is breathtaking, but it is not evidence of disinterested historical inquiry. It is evidence of the ability of well-staffed courts to produce snow jobs. So is Scalia really using this, you know, very careful process of originalism, or is he manipulating originalism to get to the political result that he ultimately wants? It's a good question. Scalia sees himself as a good judge judge of historians as well as history. So he is looking at the kind of history that's sent to him in the legal briefs, and he is picking the pieces that will get him the result that he wants. What he wanted there was, in the Heller case, was an individual right of self-defense. That right of self-defense isn't in the Second Amendment and isn't in the Constitution. And to get there, he has to change the rules of grammar by moving the well-regulated militia predecessor to the keep and bear arms section of the Second Amendment to the back right. of the Second Amendment and go right to this individual right of self-defense. And I think part of what he was doing was if he made that claim, he would pick up the libertarian Anthony Kennedy. He would also pick up the libertarian Clarence Thomas. He'd be able to hold his five-vote majority. Hmm. You know, this book really gives you a better sense of what makes Anthony Scalia tick. You know, the takeaway was that he's an incredibly intellectual guy. He also craves attention and we were talking about this how it's interesting as smart as he is he's actually become more and more partisan as he gets older how much of that well first of all how common is that for judges on the Supreme Court to, to seek that attention but how much of that falls back to him just wanting people to to follow him and to like him there are two parts of Scalia's personality that became evident when he was in college at Georgetown he was Tony Scalia the charismatic actor who everyone loved he was Nino Scalia, the championship college debater who would use ad hominem attack to win at all costs. When he was appointed to the Supreme Court, Ronald Reagan thought he was getting Tony Scalia, that he would bring the conservatives together. But in fact, the person who showed up was Nino Scalia. And from the very first moment, he wanted to establish that he was the equal of the other eight people and that he was, in fact, going to be their leader. As justices get older, sometimes people like William O. Douglas and others try to become more an individual on the court, a court of one, so that they can get attention as opposed to the others on the court. And so I think that's what we've been seeing here.
Hmm. Bruce, the book is masterful in explaining how Scalia has manipulated the court and manipulated others like Kennedy to get the decision that he wanted. Thank you so much for writing it. Best of luck with it.